The president's labor board just issuing a ruling that could be a game changer for jobs. And John says it's not a good one. Explain, <laughs> sir. Well, the, 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 national, uh, the NLRB decided to do with franchises uh, that you could actually unionize on that level and go to the corporate uh, headquarters. Now, look, I'm not a fan of either party, but the unions support Democrats, so Democrats support unions. This was a 100% partisan vote at the NLRB, which means if I own a franchise, say, in Sweetwater, Texas, it's a Kentucky Fried Chicken, my 10 employees can go to the headquarters of KFC and demand a, they've unionized, and demand a, a wage increase, and now I despite the fact that corporate headquarters has no idea about my market, it's my mom and pop store, I run it, I own it, they dictate to me the wages. And in converse, you can also be held responsible for your franchisees, which the headquarters have no control over. These aren't your CEOs who are trying to buy a third home. These are your mom and pop stores now that are gonna be pushed back to the corporate headquarters. All it is is a union grab. Uh, Emily, you think this is a good thing, why? I do. I actually think it's a little bit more simple than that. I think these are large corporations that to their franchisees, they dictate qualifications for hiring. They dictate shift schedules. They dictate how they input all of that information. And now the employee can start to act like the corporate is their employer. They've been acting like their employer. And now the employee can start to deal with them like they are employer. Yeah, but Gary B, but they, they, they don't pay them. They don't supervise them. They don't understand the market necessarily. As John said, these are small businesses and unions are getting in on it. Exactly. You know, the, I, what I love about the liberals, for the word liberal, they sure like a lot of rules. They like to really <laughs> control things. But, you know, the bottom line, Brenda, for me is what I'm going to see is that when you start to become unionized, what happens? The wages go up. And what happens when the wages go up? We've seen it already in Seattle, in the restaurant industry, when their wages went to $11 an hour starting in April, they saw the largest decrease in restaurant employment since the recession, where all the areas outside Seattle, by the way, were increasing restaurant workers. I would challenge anyone on the left to point to these industries where unionization has increased jobs. I can point to a lot where it's decreased jobs. Steel, auto, textiles, uh, airlines. About the only one where you see unions increasing jobs is where they have a monopoly, and that's in government. Do you want to answer that, Emily, quickly? Well, I mean, first of all, this ruling does not actually say that the franchisees should be unionizing. It opens the door to it well, because the yes, employees but, can start to deal with the corporation but, as the but employer. But to, Gary, to, to Gary's point, what industries have we seen jobs increasing when unions got involved? Look, let the market dictate it. If, if the employees and the franchisees don't want to unionize, they don't have to. The way the rule has okay, been operating okay. at this point is if they try to unionize, the corporation can actually cut off the franchise okay. without any recourse. Okay, all right. You didn't answer my question, but that's okay. But I will. <laughs> you will. Okay, go ahead, Jonas. Sports in Hollywood. Okay, okay. moving back. <laughs> moving back, I will say, look, you know, this is actually why a higher federal minimum wage is a superior option to raise the wage base for loan workers than to have more unions in the middle negotiate. And that is a lousier output thing. I will say companies take advantage of temp agencies. That is why they've been growing for 30 years in this country, to avoid rules that are put on them, whether it's what insurance they have to provide, wages, unionization, et cetera. The problem with this, because it would be great if, in theory, everyone will get a higher wage, is it's going to be like the batteries that we recycle in America. They go to Mexico now because the rules here are very strict. There are no rules in Mexico. And these companies, will, in this case, it was a recycling case. They will move that to Mexico, and the, the world will get more polluted than it would if it was done here, these unions and the government need to focus on raising the, right. the level of all workers here. around the world, not just to here because they're pushing the jobs to worse places. Okay, I've got to get to Gary here was, here was, Go ahead. Here's the problem. You are trying to change something that has been working for years, and that is the independence of franchisees. And it is not true that it's so coordinated to headquarters. Ask any franchisee out there that has five stores or five restaurants. They have their own way of doing things. They have their own hours, the, um, a, a different amount of employees because different locations make th different things that are needed. So that's crazy that they're doing this. It continues to be government taking a bat and bashing business over the head for I don't know what reason. And, and John, um, just to end with you, you think this is going to backfire and hurt jobs? Absolutely, because you, it's hard. Let's talk about the national minimum wage. You, you can't put a national minimum wage of, of a significant level. It's got to be regional. It's got to be municipality because you can't compare Biloxi, Mississippi, and the cost of living there to New York or Silicon Valley. That's why it needs to be done by region, and that's why these franchisees need to have control of their own business. Okay, thanks, guys.
Cashing in just over an hour from now. Eric, what do you guys have coming up? Hi, Brenda. Violence in the workplace. A madman murdering two former co-workers on live TV. What can companies do to keep you safe at your job? Plus, the father of a hero who stopped a terror attack, calling the enemy what it is and blasting the DCPC ways. We debate. You decide. Cashing in. See you at 1130. And we watch. Thanks, Eric. But up here first, Twitter and Facebook taking quick action after the deadly shooting in Virginia. But do we need to see more quick action like this?